Welcome back to a regular feature I know a lot of people look forward to where we have doctors answering your questions. And tonight we're joined by Dr. Isaac Bogosh, an infectious disease specialist in Toronto with the University Health Network, and Dr. Michael Curry, emergency room physician at Delta Hospital just outside Vancouver. And Dr. Bogosh, uh, let's start with a question to you from a viewer who says that I have an elderly relative who lives on her own and needs my assistance. How do I safely visit to help with her needs? Yeah, that's a very challenging situation because we're told to spread apart and keep our distance. We're also aware that the elderly are certainly the most vulnerable population amongst us and we need to do everything we can to prevent them from getting infected. But of course, some people live alone and truly need help. So this is where someone needs to be extremely careful when they're entering that house. Uh, you know, impeccable hand hygiene, uh, it, it, that's, it's crucial. And of course, do not go into that house if you're feeling any symptoms whatsoever. It's important to have someone else go into the house to assist if you feel unwell. Great, clear advice, thank you. Let's go to Dr. Curry now, and here's a question from a viewer who says that uh, I'm making cloth masks for people in my community mm -hmm. who work in essential businesses. Is this a good idea? It's heartwarming to hear that, and it seems like a good idea, but the evidence is at best mixed on whether masks help to prevent people in the general population from getting well. And those studies are based on using masks that are professionally fabricated with special filtration material. It's a bit different in healthcare. When I'm at work, I've got people coughing in my face all day long. But for the general population, there's a suggestion people actually spend more time fiddling with the masks and touching their face, and that it actually might even lead to higher rates of infection. So for right now, it seems like a great idea. However, I don't think the evidence really supports that for the general population. In countries where you see people wearing masks, it's not to prevent uh, healthy people from getting sick, but it's to prevent sick people from infecting others. And with COVID-19, if you're sick, don't wear a mask, stay home. Yeah, and I don't know your guys' experience, but I got to tell you, walking around in Vancouver, increasing number of people wearing all kinds of masks from, uh, you know, professional ones to what look like homemade ones. Let's go on to the next question now to Dr. Bogosh. When a person infected with COVID-19 speaks or exhales, how long does the virus stay in the surrounding air? That's a great question. We, we're hearing this one a lot. Uh, luckily, these are large droplets. They fall to the ground or to the surface around wherever someone's coughing or sneezing or breathing very, very quickly. They do not stay, they do not stay suspended in the air for very long. Uh, so they'll, they'll contaminate the surfaces around a person rather quickly, but they're not going to be floating around in the air for people to catch you know, minutes or hours later. Yeah, but let me ask a follow-up question. Like keeping in mind the, the two meter six foot rule, you know, if you're on a city street and you're walking by somebody, uh, what is the infection risk there? It's extraordinarily small. Uh, certainly, obviously, we have to avoid situations where people are very close to each other. And of course, we have to have good cough or sneeze hygiene where we cough or sneeze into our arm, not into the air or around us. Uh, but, you know, for very small periods of time when people are passing each other on the street or cycling past each other, uh, the risk would be extraordinarily small. I said this last week. We have more questions, but we've run out of time. But I know Andrew and Adrian will be uh, listening to uh, questions and answers tomorrow as well. We ask your COVID-19 questions every night, so send them to us. You can message us directly on Instagram at CBC The National, or you can send us an email at covid at cbc.ca.